Hello everybody, this is uh, attempt three at recording the Patreon video. I am officially off the internet connection and so this is going to have to go out as a recording and it's very fascinating what is happening because we haven't really had a huge rain like this in the middle of the day since we've gotten here and the rain started precisely at the moment I was supposed to start this Patreon transmission <laughs> and the discussions that we were going to have today um, are revolving around power, the sources of our power and especially in relation to the shamanic studies in you know the teachings that are coming through. I love to um, represent the natural realm and connect as many of these teachings and these energy work in, in relation to the natural realm. And so when I was meditating on um, this transmission today, what had come through was the solar plexus and acceleration and ascension and water. And I actually was seeing that in our session today, we would be doing a shamanic meditation where we connected with the water rain energy and allow the rain to cleanse our energy body um, as well as anything any karmic residue that is ready to be lifted ready to be cleansed and so this land is really intimately connected with me I'm, I'm tearing up really because this is like a huge source of power and that the elemental forces are supporting and are in co-creation with these transmissions and it's very unfortunate that I am not able to um, be transmitting this live um, but I think you guys caught a couple of minutes of live transmission anywho <laughs> um, I'm hoping that you could hear the rumbling thunder that is around and so I think I should just start again from the beginning as I'm not sure really how much of what I was transmitting was recorded on the YouTube lives. Um, so yeah, today we're talking about power. <laughs> and when we say the word power, Having grown up in the world, in the reality that most of us have, you know, with cars and houses and laundry machines and shopping malls and politicians, this word power might bring up a whole bunch of different definitions. And for the majority of the time when we personally connect with this word power, it might actually subconsciously feel like everything else has more of it than we do. Destiny, our teachers, our parents, addictions. It might seem that in this world full of supposedly war and famine, that all of this is outside of our power and that we may actually seem quite powerless. And then we might see the distortions of power, and this makes us empaths really allergic to this word altogether. We see that power is misused. We see that energy is being transformed into weapons. And this makes us cower even further away from this word power. But yet, in the last couple of weeks, In my personal life, in my friends, in my clients, this theme of power is coming up again and again and again. And I think that it is because we are on a precipice of another ginormous wave of awakening where more starseeds and more light workers are contracted and given the signal to wake up and embody and step into their mission in a deeper way. And this wave is occurring in October through December in preparation for the amazingness that is going to unfold in 2020.
And so when we are speaking about this word power, we as the light bringers, we as the peacemakers, the ones who are bringing the solutions, we're really talking about anchoring into our own confidence of being in connection with our body, being in connection with the frequency of our own soul, and being in connection with the infinite flowing life force that is abundant all around us. And it's like we are moving and we are understanding this difference between the false matrix ideas of power and what power really is in the new earth. And so we are going to do a group healing today focusing on opening and clearing out any misunderstandings and blockages and distortions in and around the solar plexus in the left and right and center, front and back um, aspects of the solar plexus. And as well, we're going to be working on several meridian lines that are feeding through the stomach, like the liver and the pancreas and even the kidneys. There is deep rumbling transformation. (sighs) And so in the shamanic studies what we call soul retrieval is when we bring back pieces of ourself that have fragmented and it is believed in the shamanic traditions that when we experience trauma and it doesn't have to be something like um, a very clear trauma like you you know fell and you broke your leg It could just be that you went to school and really didn't like it and you were really bored. And this could kind of be traumatizing for the soul. It's kind of like a subconscious trauma. So it's actually quite easy for the soul to leave if the soul is not fully engaged in its existence embodied. And that's pretty much everyone on the planet. And so what happens when parts of our soul leave is that we become disempowered, we become quiet, we become somber, we can get depression, we can be sleepy all the time, we can be tired. And it's because part of our energy, part of our power source has left our body. And so when we say we're, um, when we perform or engage in activities such as soul retrieval, we're going back in time in the quantum realm to look for pieces of ourself that we can bring back. Any time in our life that we have lost our power or have felt disempowered, we can go back to those points in time and reclaim that power. And when that occurs, we might actually literally feel more energy, more presence return to us. So we're going to be doing some of that today. And as well... You may have witnessed the joy and the ecstasy that elemental forces bring us when we are in connection to it. As I was mentioning earlier, it really felt like that when I wrote the word water in the description this morning... Um, that spirit and this land and everything which is all in oneness was bringing through this energy of cleansing and so here we're bringing in this connection that we have to the elemental world that is actually of course always supporting our awakening and our healing journey because As we awaken, we come to recognize 
that our power source, our source, is the living earth. And I find that there's not enough talk about this in the New Age Awakening community. And it's almost consciously bypassed in a way because really this is the source of our true power. And it was, um, I think yesterday a friend of mine was talking to his mom and she was telling us a story about how this young person had bought 40 houses of real estate and um, he was only 25 years old or something. And she said that this person was now set for life, like he had everything he needed to survive. (laughs) And then today we went out to a permaculture farm and there was like an 80 year old man who had been there for 15 years and he had built these beautiful immaculate gardens. And when he started, there was only clay soil. And so he had to really learn the plants that would heal the soil. And there were parts of his land that he was um, healing the soil with plants that would then become gardens in many years in the future. And I would say that this man is actually taken care of. Um, And so I think that this is a shift in our understanding and our source of power of where we are obtaining our power and I think that this is a really important reconnection in the process of moving from the false matrix to the organic matrix and this also help us make the right decisions because it really grounds us back into the reality and so of course um, for those of you who know my work I am just speaking words And I'm actually just putting sounds and words to a feeling that I'm transmitting to you to activate or accelerate or enhance this connection to the elemental realm that you personally have between your energy field and the natural world. And again, I'm regrettably sorry that this cannot be live as I'm said the internet has worked fine for a few days and we hadn't had that intense of weather but this energy is being transmitted to the quantum realm want to speak more on this idea of power as that I feel that the there are so I feel that the subconscious and our somatic body are very connected and that when we close our eyes to meditate There are so many layers of energy beyond the physical body. So by that I mean when we close our eyes, we can feel that there might be flesh, like you have blood and bones and skin. But on an even subtler realm and level, there are layers of energy. And I feel like those layers of energy that correspond to parts of our body are deeply connected to our subconscious. And so this is why subconscious and intellectual beliefs and understandings of this concept of power is connected to the physical body part of the stomach as well as our thighs and ankles and I want to dive into exploring some of these finer kind of complicated subconscious belief systems or understandings that we might have about power having been immersed in the false matrix for the majority of our life right so we are bringing into the light of awareness some of these things um, that as we speak about them they're released or corrected and so of course the first one is 
you will not survive or we would not survive if we didn't have money. So this belief system is being restructured into we would not survive without vital life force energy or raw elements of matter. And there might be um, very fine subconscious energies of um, deception that we're clearing out. Any sadness or anger or resentment that we have been lied to or deceived. These distortions are victimizing distortions that we are clearing so that we can acquire the balancing or the opposite of these distortions which would restore empowerment in our system. This is really a huge topic, right? It's like, you know, as we are doing this ourself, as we are doing this in our own body, we really realize this is really the, what the whole of humanity is going through. What the whole of humanity is remembering and realizing is that we have been cut off from our own source of energy, our own soul, and our planet, which is really where life receives is energy and so this reconnection is occurring in all those different aspects and dimensions of self of course i'm sending you that fresh post rain forest scent It itself is sending waves of release and relief, relaxation through your body. It is monsoon season out here. And, uh, we're having lightning storms like every day usually only rains like a little bit and we're gonna have like a lot of lightning and so I'm finding that the lightning energy really interfaces with new information it's the only way that kind of new energy can anchor into the earth and so everywhere we've traveled we've seen a lot of lightning and here it's like lightning storm every day and you can really feel that this new light, this new information comes in with reconfigurations of the genetics. I am beyond over the moon joyful to be sharing this energy with you. So we're talking about how for a lot of empaths and a lot of light workers, we are just gentle and loving creatures. And so it's really difficult sometimes for us to even grasp the idea of power because we've only seen examples of it that are distorted or misusing it. And so we almost are allergic to the idea and we want to run as far away as we can from it. Uh, 
and we're restoring these distortions in our belief system regarding power and this is about an inch or two below the belly button towards the right side it's related to the umbilical cord and the womb related to our dantian which is where we store our energy and of course the womb is in connection to the greater womb that is the earth and the earth is really where humanity acquires our physical life force energy and there is a correction that is occurring Whew, okay this is a collective correction that is occurring here it's the misunderstanding that we have to take in order to obtain power that in order to have what we need not what we want just in order to have what we need we need to fight and kill and destroy and grab things and this is a false belief system this is a false fear that we are clearing from our ancestral bodies as well as the collective and this is balancing the channel of reciprocity between ourself and our humanity and the earth So as that is clearing out, this sort of aggression, this aggression that comes from this false belief, this false fear that there's not enough. Connecting in with the heart just to bring in a wave of energy to assist, to push this clearing through. It's a big one and it's really old and we're kind of creating a template for the collective at the moment so it's taking a little while so just keep breathing do the continuous one breath if you are feeling called taking steady breaths in and out without a pause between the in breath and the out breath this is gonna help bring continuity into the movement of energy to allow this to push this through This is the underlying, okay, let's see how I can describe this. Humans are innocent creatures. Our bodies have a very innocent and kind of primal and primordial intelligence. And so it's very simple in a way. Um, life was supposed to be simple you know our tongues can taste sweetness and that usually means that whatever it is we put in our mouth is edible and so we can eat it so all of these senses are very innocent and they have a very beneficial function and so the false matrix 
had made a way to profit and to trick these very innocent and subtle senses that the body inherently has. For example, creating white sugar, which is a deadly chemical (laughs) that creates all sorts of different diseases. And it's almost like it's tricking the innocence of the body. It's like taking something that's originally good and innocent and distorting it and tricking it into harming itself. And so the very innocent aspect of um, the human that is the sensation of hunger is being utilized and weaponized to make us fear that there is not enough so that we'll run on the hamster wheel. And this is the virus, this is the distortion that we're clearing out right now, and it's really deep and really old. And so in order for us to create true symbiosis, true reciprocity, we have to heal and restore these very subtle subconscious viruses that we inherited from the false system. So there's a lot of stuff that comes along with that, right? Like all the karmic residue that is related to this frequency is being cleared out. All the fear that is related to this distortion is being cleared out. We're almost there. this is the energy that is the foundation and the underlying source of this need to hustle this need to go out and make money because we need to survive So those energies really keep us from being able to even perceive and recognize the true abundance that's all around us and the different kinds of nourishment that feeds and brings sustenance to different parts of us. Subtle things like the auras of the trees and how they interact with our energy body Subtle things like the smell of the air after it rains. This realization that this land actually gives birth to countless thousands, millions of different species of life. I mean, how we can walk around in the world without the integration of those realities is an abomination and a crime, really. (laughs) 
So as we clear out these viruses, these distortions in our system, we're making more room, making it more accessible for our body and our consciousness and our state of being to access this subtle levels of abundance that is all around us. And this is where true reciprocity begins because we then are not taking, we're not energetically and vampirically taking from our environment, from people around us, from the planet. But in fact, we're recognizing that energy is given to us, that we are being born into this abundance and then we recognize that we also are a part of that abundance, that there are things inside of us, that there is creativity and love and joy inside of us that adds to the tapestry of abundance and that there is not really a need to take when we recognize our worth because then we'll understand that it is in the plan that we have what we need. It is a part of the perfection of ecology that we have what we need. And so in a big way, I feel like to put it simply, what we're recognizing is that nature is God. Nature might be just a greater macrocosmic level of the divine oneness of everything that we are a part of. And so as the universe gave birth to the earth and the earth gave birth to us, if we stay in reciprocity and absolute infinite awe of the earth itself, we are giving respect and awe to God and perhaps we want to say the great spirit or the divine, whatever words we want to use to describe the sacred life energy. We're building an energetic reciprocity between us and the earth and we're allowing any energies of shame to just clear to be washed away by this rain energy and this shame might be collective as well feeling like maybe after everything that we have done feeling like after really absolutely forgetting that the earth is our mom that we might feel like we're no longer worthy and we're just clearing all of those energies out because it's not your fault we were just born into the system we were just born into the world and it was already the way it was and so we only knew what we were taught but now that we are waking up now that we're coming into our aliveness, then it is our choice and this is where it is important. Are we going to choose to continue to not be aware of the natural divinity of the planet? Or is this when we truly make an agreement in our heart to com connect with her and communicate with her, to respect her? as our creatrix and our mother and I think that this is a source of a lot of power for us When we really recognize that we're not just quote unquote fighting for our life, but 
the ecological genius of this planet. That we can transform our awe and our delight in all of these subtle forms of abundance into a fierce guardianship. Then we find our purpose. And this purpose, this sense of fulfillment is something else that gives us power. Because we recognize then that we are actually a part of a very big tapestry of life. And that when we vocalize and stand up for the oneness of life, that all of life is behind you. And this is a sense of power that we as empaths and light workers we can stand behind this is the kind of power that we want to swallow and digest and integrate There's really so much elemental energy going on right now. It's so awesome. I want to talk about accelerated ascension because I think that for a lot of people this is going to be happening a new wave of awakening is happening um, and that means that you know some of these light workers that have been undercover were staying on the sidelines are being called into action um, and finally becoming you know a guide or a support or someone who is sharing information as you know a new wave of millions of people waking up those people are going to need the support of those who have gone through the awakening process already and so this is why um, I've gotten a lot of emails lately of people who are saying like hey I think I'm ready to step forward and move into the next level of embodiment the next level of empowerment the next level of my mission here on earth and it's such an exciting time (laughs) 
And so people are asking, where do we start? And I think that with any uh, period of time where great acceleration is happening, we're recognizing that there is a lot of energy coming in from space, coming in from the sun, coming in from these thunder and lightning storms that are here to help and there's a way to harness this energy and focus it into our growth and evolution and this is the thing that we're literally doing right now it's almost like using our subtle body to merge with the elemental forces and that's you know cosmic space weather as well solar rays Allowing our consciousness to send out these tendrils of light to connect with the vibrations and the information that is held in those elemental energies. And then actually just relaxing and allowing that energy to move through our body. A lot of that is having even clearer understanding of the different viruses and distortions that are inside our consciousness that... Um, are keeping our soul from expressing freely because that's all it is right it's like we are already you know master or magical or awakened perfect souls that came here to embody in these physical bodies and the only thing that's keeping us from experiencing that and expressing as that all the time are just the memories and the um geometries of expression that we've solidified during the time when we um, were still expressing as our false 3d self that you know had a corporate job or whatever and so what we're doing is we're dissolving those what i call geometries or structures or energies or uh, indentations <laughs> <sighs> so that you can actually just naturally be yourself. And I think that the acceleration energy, energies really make it easier, make it faster for us to dissolve these karmic and ancestral imprints that is happening at the moment. a notification here I'm going to delete some files because it's trash there you go really beautiful vibrant energy of nature connectedness that is transmitting at the moment it's a sort of 
serenity, with aliveness inside of it. It's a sort of magic with intelligence feeding it. And it's a sort of silent communication that tells a million stories. And I think that this is such a deep nourishment for the somatic body because the body doesn't ever live in separation from nature. I mean, it doesn't live in separation with the physical world and so inside the false matrix, it is deprived of this kind of nourishment, this kind of connection to bigger aspects of itself. So interesting unfolding for the day. I do apologize for the wobbly internet connection that I'm having, but as you can see, I am having the best time out here, and we are in the first phases of building a shamanic training and sanctuary place a false matrix <laughs> detox place and uh, there's a lot going on here you know maybe I'll just tell you a little bit about what has unfolded so far we have only been here for exactly a week and um, I can feel the spirit of Stuart here on this land as this was the place that he was going to retire and he didn't really get to do that um, because he died in 2013 and he was only 59 years old and Stuart was the man that bought these properties. He left his retirement fund in a land trust to support some of the activities that have gone on here and for some of you that have not heard the story basically I didn't know him when he was alive he uh, bought this land and told everyone that he is from Andromeda and that after he died this little Chinese girl who was also from Andromeda was going to come along and that I'm going to continue his work here and so in 2013 around the time he died was also when I woke up and started communicating with Andromedans. I was informed that I had spent a lot of time there in recent lifetimes studying uh, genetics and creational magic and 
I specifically started communicating with this masculine guide who at the time would appear in this ma- magic spacesuit and he would take me time space traveling and all this fun things. So I thought that he was just, you know, an astral guide and um it turns out that he was actually Stuart who had just died and that 2 years later I had this super random synchronicity that um allowed me to find this place and the land steward uh when I went to visit him was like, "Oh my gosh, you're the Chinese girl, you're the Andromedan." And he said that I talk like Stuart and that we have very similar ideologies and understandings about things. And so Stuart had wanted this place to be a starseed activation magic school and to me that feels really much like a shamanic kind of galactic shamanic training ground um because we're not here on vacation we're here to renovate a whole planet and uh soon enough we'll be ready to facilitate all sorts of cool happenings on these properties that are a legacy of this visionary man who was ahead of his time. Um but this land is nestled in between quite a few reservations. There's the Zuni reservation off maybe 10 15 miles from here and then there's the Rama Navajo reservation which is actually on like we're literally on the edge of it. Um And it's been really interesting being here because, you know, as an empathic being who's very tuned into uh, astral energies, it's very obvious that there have been things that occurred here that were not nice. And it's actually really difficult for me who grew up, you know, in the city and in the false matrix, who's very sheltered from the sorts of things that occurred on reservations to actually now be here after cultivating connection to nature and so I really cultivated my connection to nature on these pilgrimages uh you know like having a crazy dream about needing to do ayahuasca on top of a mountain in a cave by myself and then actually going and finding a jar of it and then climbing up the mountain and doing it you know these sorts of interactions cultivated my connection to nature without any specific lineage of shamanism. So like my mind wasn't, let's say like educated by any specific lineage. I learned by remembering my you know, past life skills and learning with the plants themselves. So after cultivating those connections and coming to a land like this, um, it really woke me up to a lot of things because I hadn't been introduced or exposed to a lot of Native American things. Um, You know, I don't really necessarily consider plant medicine and shamanism to belonging only to certain tribes of Native people Um, as somebody who, you know, probably was a tree spirit or something. Like, trees don't belong to, like, tribes and stuff. They're just kind of, like, alive on the planet, right? So it was very eye-opening to be here because for the first couple days I could just cry all day because I felt just such immense sadness because these beings, these native tribes, these people um, really represent like the connection to the earth and the innocence that humanity have lost. Or a better way to say it is that it had been destroyed. It had been cut off from humans on purpose to make them slaves and these people these native american people like are the people that experience this in the physical realm like as the symbol of that like they were the ones that got murdered and ripped away from the land and were put into these schools to literally delete these natural ancient wisdom from their mind like they were the ones that experienced the brunt of that on this planet And so, of course, within that, I also feel a lot of resilience. And this is the same resilience that allows these plants to grow on concrete. That is to say that nature and life is all-powerful. 
and that it will continue to grow over things that is not preferable, even if there are temporary setbacks and diseases. And so I guess I'm saying all of this to remind everyone how important it is to cultivate our true connection to nature. Open, open. Thank you. Because our connection to nature and our connection to the earth is our connection to the reality which is the earth star which is why we are healing the earth star um, our sacred connection to reality itself that had been distorted and this is the whole crux of what we're doing with ad advanced light work so i am feeling like i'm actually going to be uh, changing the patreon thingy a little bit I think that I want to start doing weekly transmissions that are one hour long instead of two hour transmissions every two weeks um, I think that doing two hour transmissions are a bit intense and doing like two hour sessions in this energy would be a little intense and that having it in a more repetitive pattern would be also better for everyone so let me know if this is a good idea and if you want this to happen. I'm feeling like um, this would be a good thing for me. And um, also maybe let me know if you like it when I do these things live. Because I'm going to keep trying to do these live. And of course if it you know the internet dies or something of course I'll just record it and upload it like we did this week. And um, of course, I'm always open to your suggestions if there's something specific that you want us to explore um, together, then just send me a message um, either on my email or Patreon, earthstarhealer at uh, gmail.com. <laughs> That's weird, I almost said hotmail. Anyway, um, it's such a joy to connect with you in this beautiful space that we have created together and I will catch you next week which is going to be on anyway because I owe you guys one from last month. I love you all so much and bye for now.